14 million people worldwide are considered to be displaced persons, refugees in search of homes. This group of Indo-Chinese refugees await their resettlement in the United States with hope, innocent of the complex society they will soon meet. For the Hmong, Highland tribes people from Southeast Asia, the personal adaptation process of resettling in America is especially extreme. Victims of the United States' secret war in Laos and its political aftermath, this family has chosen to accept their ironic fate. They are becoming American. There are many camps like this one at Nam Miao, Thailand. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees established the camps throughout Southeast Asia to deal with the masses of refugees flowing out of Indo-Chinese war zones. They are not homes, but places to wait for resettlement, places to rest from a past of fear, the diet, subsistence. <laughs> For the last six years, Heng Su has waited here in Nam Miao in remote northeastern Thailand. <laughs> About 11,000 other refugees, mostly Hmong and Mien, tribes people from Highland Laos, crowd into the village-like camp. Okay, the supply man tells Su, you get 12 measures of rice for the next three days. There are nine members in Hang Su's family. The rice will feed them two meals a day until the next ration. Su was married in Laos in 1974 and has one son. But he has also taken responsibility for his brother's widow, Mong Vong, and her five children. He was 26 when his brother died last year in camp. Mong Vong was 36, a farmer like Hang Su and a highly skilled embroiderer. She did not become Sue's second wife when her husband died, as is customary in Hmong tradition. I didn't want to marry my young brother-in-law, so I didn't, she said. I don't want to have any more children until I have a permanent home. Hang Vu, Mong's oldest son, is eight years old. Hang Kia is 13, the eldest of Mong Vong's living children. One of the great strengths of this family and of Hmong people in general is their strong sense of family unity based on patrilineal clan structure. There are about 21 Hmong clans organized from male family lines. Hmong Vong left her own clan when she married, became a member of her husband's clan, even though she kept her family name. Chao Ta also joined her husband's clan when she married Hang Su. Together, just after their wedding, they fled Laos in 1976. It was a rigorous trek out of their lush jungle highlands, a journey that many Hmong did not survive. Hang Cha, their son, was born last year in camp. It is unlikely he will ever see his parents' homeland.
The Hmong have not always lived in confinement. A proud and independent people, they have maintained a strong cultural identity through many centuries of migration through China and into Southeast Asia. Once a lowland valley people, they moved to more defendable mountain terrain, eluding the dominating attempts of the Chinese Han for nearly 150 years. The Hmong kept to the mountaintops, kept to themselves. Theirs has always been an agrarian culture and movement a way of life. Economic strength and independence in the face of political control by the Chinese, the Lao, and the French came from their cultivation of opium poppies. Two and a half million Hmong still live in China and many thousand populate northern Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam. But many of the Hmong from Laos, some 250,000 of them, fell into a political entanglement which broke their thread to this long cultural continuity. In the mid-1960s, major leaders of the Hmong tribes in northern Laos were contacted by members of the CIA. Already a general in the Royal Lao Army, Bong Pao became an ally to the U.S., encouraging village men and boys to fight as hired soldiers for the secret war in Laos. Secret, because at that time, very few people in America knew about this clandestine U.S. involvement in Laos. Fifteen to 20,000 Hmong soldiers fought first-line Vietnamese troops for five to six years between 1968 and 1973. Assisted by the CIA and Air America, a private airlines on contract to the CIA, the Hmong became known as tough guerrilla fighters for the USA. The secret war engaging people from Mien, Kaimu, Lua, and Hmong hill tribes was designed to tie down as many North Vietnamese troops as possible, keeping them from moving along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to South Vietnam. Some Hmong soldiers were paid. Some, exchanging their services for rice rations, became dependent upon airdrop supplies, while their own crops were left unattended. Hmong casualties ran to the tens of thousands ten times those faced proportionately by American soldiers in Vietnam. There is a startling absence of men and boys of fighting age among the surviving Hmong population. Large numbers of widows were given money for the loss of their husbands and sons. Mac Allen Thompson, currently refugee affairs officer for the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok, and formerly in charge of USAID rice drops into Laos. During the 15, 20 years of U.S. involvement in Indochina, uh, the Hmong probably had the closest relationship with the U.S. government of any other, uh, or more so than any other ethnic group, uh, uh, whether in Vietnam, in Cambodia, or in, in Laos. Uh, the Hmong now are, as a group, are in difficult situations because of this. They're the only group that the, uh, the Vietnamese have pretty well singled out for anti-Hmong operations. <laughs> 